Terry. Happy holidays, oh, everyone. Happy holidays to you, too. It's great to have you back. I will mute myself right now, and you take it away. Great. Thanks so much. Today, we're going to talk about shorting stocks. And again, if you are interested in shorting, I'm the person to teach you. So we're going to talk today about lots and lots of things, the economy, interest rates, making money. If you'd like to hear or see me more, uh, I actually appear on TV, I appear on Fox News, Fox Business, CBS News, talking about the stock market, talking about the economy and lots of things that we're concerned about which of course is interest rates. If you would like more information, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. Today, specifically, we're gonna talk about trading and we're gonna talk about trading for a living and we're gonna talk about the end of the year. So here we are, it's December 7th, it's hard to believe, less than 30 days away from the end of the year. So think about how was your year trading? Did you have a good year this year in 2023? Or are you having a bad year? Are you up money for the year trading? Or are you down money for the year? You can tell me if you want in the chat or you don't have to tell me, but it's important to be honest with yourself. So again, <laughs> many people have been trading for a long time and attempting to be successful and not quite getting where they want to be. If you're not where you wanna be for the year, you have to change what you're doing to have a successful year next year and be at a different place 12 months from now. Again, you don't want to continue doing the same strategy or trading the same way if you are losing money this calendar year. A lot of people wait till January, February to think about New Year's resolutions. You have to start thinking and planning for your year now, today. It's actually not too late. And it's actually not too early. So think about where you wanna be and your goals for 2024. I have here the results for my live trading room. I run a live trading room every day where I call the trades live. Today we did Walmart. You could actually still be in it. We're short Walmart. Again, we're gonna talk about shorting today. But these are the results for the day trade rooms for 2023. We're up for the year 536,460. And again, so far this year, we're having a good year. We're going to see where we go into the end of this week, tomorrow's Friday, and then next week with the rate hike, which is on Wednesday, or the rate meeting, I should say. Um, they could hike rates, they could signify they're gonna hike rates, or they could signify they're gonna lower rates on Wednesday of next week. Right now, currently, the market's rallying. And you can say, well, why are you shorting? Because I'm looking for specific stocks to short, like the Walmart, like I just talked about, and I mentioned that we shorted today. I also trade options for those of you that like to do options. My strategy you can use to do options. We're up for the year, over 2 million for the year doing options. Now, an options trade, I'm taking buying calls and selling them or buying puts and selling them. And again, a put is a short. So I use my same strategy to do options so that I can hold trades for bigger moves overnight. And again, we're actually in a Walmart put as well as the Walmart day trade short. So this is our year to date results for the newsletter, for the options newsletter. So I run a live trading room to do day trades, which you have to have a margin account. And the options newsletter is a subscription service where you get the trades emailed to you directly in your email. And any questions you can write it in the room, I'll see as we go along today. But like I said, focus on 2024. That's where your focus needs to be. You need to prepare to have a better year next year, no matter what. Even if you made money this year, you wanna make more money next year. That is where you wanna be. That's the point. Goal setting, it's very, very important. I'm very goal oriented. I'm always setting bigger goals for myself as well, each and every single year. But it's the American dream really to become rich, successful, and financially independent. Everyone wants to get somewhere with their life, again, if you're financially independent and you're successful, you don't really care if interest rates go up necessarily. It doesn't affect you. Or maybe actually it does affect you in a good way where you have money on deposit at banks and then you get the bump up in the rates. But lots of people trade or want to trade for a living because they want to be independent. They, don't, they want to be their own boss. They don't want to work for someone else. But ultimately, it really is the American dream to become rich, successful, and financially independent. People who take risks can make millions of dollars. Trading is a vehicle for even the average person without a lot of money to, in fact, get rich. But it won't happen without a successful strategy. So if you don't have a strategy at all, that's a problem. And then you need a successful strategy on top of that to make money trading the market. 
And it won't happen also if you don't take risk. And there's no guarantees in trading on the market. That's why risk takers thrive in a trading environment. In general, my personality is that I'm a risk taker. It's, it always was that way even before I started trading. So again, if that's your personality too, you could be very successful trading the market. But the winners win big in the market and the losers lose big. And it will always be that way. So how can you attain the American dream? Stay focused on the dream. Get clear with your expectations of yourself in the market. Start with the amount of money you have and be satisfied risking what you can afford right now. So for example, if you have a small account, build it. Keep your eye on the goal till you get to the point where you can risk more. Be patient with yourself to grow your capital over time. Learn a good strategy from me and you can apply it daily. And what is my strategy? We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but my strategy is based on gaps. It's based on momentum. Again, Walmart, the trade today is a great example of that. You've got to define the pick you want to take every day and train and don't gamble your money away in poor trades. Focus on quality trades. Get committed to the time and money it takes to until you've realized your dream. And if you do that, you can get there and I'm here to help you because I'm teaching people how to do this and I'm teaching people to be successful. So if you're someone that wants to make a lot of money and be successful, you want to learn from someone who is successful. You want to learn from someone that's an expert. You wouldn't want to go to someone that's not successful, okay? You want to go to someone that's doing very well and learn from them so that you can apply what their knowledge and information to make it work for you in your own trading account and your own trading and your own life. But actually trading is a real job if you take it seriously. You, you're sitting down at the computer every day yourself, but you have to take it seriously. So you need a foundation to trade. You need an infrastructure, what I call an infrastructure, which is an entry, okay? An entry for every trade and the strategy. And the strategy is a core reason behind why you're even watching a stock in the first place or even contemplating an entry in a trade of it, okay? So an entry in a stock should not be taken unless the trade has a foundation supporting it. And the foundation for me is gaps. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And again, Walmart was a gap. So I use one strategy daily to stay consistent. And I teach it in a class that I teach once a month. The last class for 2023 is next weekend, December 16th and 17th. So again, I've, I've been doing this for a very long time. I started trading in 2008. It took me about three years to develop my strategy. And now here it is, it's almost 2024. So I've been tra trading nothing but gaps and nothing but the strategy that I created for a long time. So that's one of the reasons why I'm expert in shorting because I've been mostly shorting all that time. Now, sometimes I will go long. We actually went long crowd, CRWD, if you want to look it up. It was a nice long, it had a nice pop. We did calls in that, we did day trades in that, and they worked, but I prefer to short and again, one of the reasons I prefer to short is because panic comes into a stock or the market quickly. And again, this is all what you would learn from me in my class. One of the nice trades we did was Netflix. Um, we did it put in this. So let's just talk about what is a gap. So a gap is a difference between the close and the open. Let's go back. This was last week. Netflix closed at 4 o'clock Eastern time and gapped down the next day and opened at 930 at a different price. It opened at a lower price. Okay. Then it closed here, then it gapped down, then it fell, and then all the money was on Monday in Netflix. Again, I had called a put, and it dropped. Boom. And again, this is all of the selling. I haven't looked at where this is at today. I was already out of this trade. <coughs> but again, this fell, so you would have wanted to be short. And again, a put, which is an op option, is a short. Okay? So that was a nice move. So again, what is a gap? A stock gaps when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. One of the biggest trades we did this week was Meta on Monday. Meta had a gap. This was news. So going back to last week, Friday, Meta closed here, snug as above, gap down, open here, then fell. Okay. So anyways, this closed here, this gap down, this fell. So we shorted Meta, and again, you also could have bought a put. Now an option, trading options, it's a less expensive way, particularly in a stock like this, rather than doing it on margin because it's over $300 a share, it's, an, it's a cheaper way or less expensive way to short the stock. But this was the day trade that we did on Meta. It was a big trade that we did on Monday. 
stock close here, gap down, open, dropped. We got in, got the rally, then we added, got the drop out, done, boom. So again, I also like to do shorts because short moves happen fast and big and in the morning quick. Usually I'm done trading by 9.30, 9.45, 10 a.m. Between 9.30 and 10 is the time that I focus on. So I'm looking to trade fast and be done. And again, the fact that it's the holidays makes it perfect for the fast morning trades because you can do other fun things that you have going on, especially if you have kids right now and you have school activities that you wanna do with your children or for the holidays. It's, it's nice to be done trading in the morning. And again, if you have another job and you're transitioning to becoming a full-time trader, you can put an options trade on, you can put a sell order at whatever you paid for it. Say you paid a dollar for something, you could put a sell order at $1.50. It's a limit order. If it sells you out and hits the number, you'll be out of it with profit before four o'clock. So this was the meta trade. Entry was 315.75. Again, we got in. 2,000 shares is a risk of 3,700. Add at 315.99, we did an add. 4,000 shares, average price was 315.87. And again, this is momentum. This is a big move. This is a move to the downside, 313.70. And the profit was $8,680 in this move. That's it. Again, position sizing, get the direction right. Entry, exit, all of it right there. And again, this is what you'll learn how to do with me but you will also be there in the room. If you decide you wanna learn it and do it, you can get the call live from me because I called the trade. And again, you could have bought a put and you could have done it as an option. Now, how did I know Meta would fall? Well, I rated the gap. That's what I do. This is what you'd come and learn from me. This is my strategy. It's a 26 point checklist. This is the meat and potatoes for what I do every day. It tells me what to trade and what to look for each day in the trade. It's a system, a whole system of 26 points that you can learn from me in the class and then you can use it yourself. You have to define the pick that you wanna do every day and preferably you would look for it and pick it and define it before the open. Any questions here so far? Everybody with me? So when I trade, I'm looking for momentum. This gives me an edge. I'm not looking for pennies. I'm looking for dollars. Again, Walmart today is another great example. And if you can determine the momentum and what's going to have a big move before it does it, you can make money. Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. Learn how to take a position in a stock in anticipation. That's what I'm doing. That the stock will have an explosive move. You, after the fact, it's too late. These enormous moves happen in one direction and they happen very, very fast. Momentum trading is very profitable and that's how you can make a lot of money in the market. And then you add on size to that and then you really see how it can pay you. So again, my strategy is based on gaps. I rate the gap to determine the best gap, but I am only trading gaps and I do prefer to short simply because of the speed and the panic that comes in when stocks sell off. So gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps, and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will actually help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. So that's how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. Again, the whole idea is you wanna make money, you need a big move. And my Golden Gap 26 point rating system pinpoints the footprints of institutional money. How did I know that Walmart was gonna sell off? It's getting dumped. It's getting, it's getting pushed down. Institutional money is dumping it, okay? So therefore you could have bought a put in it, which we did, or you could have shorted it as a day trade, which we did too. Now I get this question a lot. What if you're a beginner? What, can you do it if you've never traded in your life? Yes. I have taught people that have never traded in their life. Again, you're gonna have a learning curve when you come to me no matter what your background is. You may have a learning curve even if you've been trading for 20 years because you don't know what I know and you're gonna learn something new. And I found a lot of people also don't know how to do certain things. In other words, they're doing things that are wrong or incorrect. Otherwise, they wouldn't be losing money, they would be winning. And, I, and I've said this before, and I'll, and I'll say this again, you don't know what you don't know. 
one of the biggest challenges that traders have, it's a, it's a negative one, fortunately for people, is that they think that they know something or they believe that something is true that isn't and they do it over and over and over again with trading and take trades and lose money. They think something, they think they know something that they don't. And you don't know what you don't know until you know it. So like what I teach in the class, you're not gonna know it until you take the class and then you know it. So that's the genius and the beauty of the system is you learn information, how to look at something and analyze something and determine and predict that something's gonna have a big move before it doesn't. Again, that's how you're gonna make money, not chasing it, okay, or getting in late. So going back to what we were saying here, here was another one we did Tesla, strike was 230. Number of contracts is 20 if you took an advanced trader risk, but the price was, was relatively inexpensive considering the price of Tesla was $4 for one contract. This was a nice trade as return investment. We did the 230 puts. Uh, we did them on the 16th here in Tesla. You could have taken one contract for $400, three contracts for $1,200 and made $900. So let's look at Tesla. It was on the 16th. So this is when I sent the trade out here. If you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get the trades live in live time and you take it when you get it. Here it was, stack close here, gap down, open, dropped, boom, you're in, you're out, done. Again, what is momentum? You chunk it out, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it out. If you wanna trade for a living, if you wanna make money, this is, you're taking the trade and you're getting out and making money. You're not taking it, holding it forever. And in reference to options, you're not holding the trade until the 24th. You are taking the trade, you're getting the move, you're getting out. Then you're taking another trade. Again, this is an active newsletter where I'm calling a lot of trades. Same thing with the day trades. We get the move, we get out. I'm out every day, usually in the morning. Today, I thought uh, Walmart would have some more traction, so I held it longer. Any questions here from anyone? I'm just looking on the side. Everybody with me? Anyways, you must have an edge to be successful. You've got to, or it's gonna be very difficult for you to make money. Mine is spotty momentum before the move occurs. So again, then we can get in early, we get a good entry, and we can decide if we want to get out quick or hold it. We've been doing BABA as well. Entry for BABA was 74.80. Risk was 3,200 for an advanced trader risk. I got in and out of this fast, but it kept going and booked $1,200. This was 11.29. And again, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So Tesla closed here on the 28th. Snug was above, right around 77. Closed here, gap down. Next day gap down here around 75 and fell. And again, this was a short. I had called a puts. I had called a bunch of puts in this actually um, because this has been falling nicely. But here was the day trade. This is a one minute chart. So I'm entering my trades in the one minute chart. I'm rating them and analyzing them on the daily to determine the direction. Stock close here, gap down, open. Again, we shorted it, got the drop, boom. And here's the move. So again, we're looking for a sell-off, and I prefer to short because many traders don't short, or if they short, they don't know how to short, or they're not good at shorting. Many traders prefer to go long. I don't know why. I guess it's good, easy for under, people to understand that concept of going long, but shorting will give you an edge, and there's plenty of things to short in any given day. But I'm looking for institutional money, big money, big money in stocks, big money in the market. What is it doing? Is it buying? Is it selling? Is it dumping the stock like the Walmart? And again, I want to go with that move. One of the biggest trades we had this week was Google. I call it last week, though, on the 30th. At 1102, I sent out the Google put, the 134 puts that expire Friday. I'm out of this. But it was a really nice move, and we'll look at it here. So here was the 30th. Oh, here we go. So again... Like the 134, so we dropped, fell. The exit was on Monday, so called it on Thursday. This was Friday, fell, gap down, Monday, boom. Take it over, you see where this went. So that gap down and fell through the strike. Actually was profitable even the first day, but it really went on Monday, December 4th. Cost was cheap, $1.50, sold at $4.50. Again, profit was $18,000 and a $9,000 risk, 200% return on investment. This doesn't matter your risk. The trade continued. So again, if you took eight contracts, risk $1,200, you could have made $2,400. So you can double your profit in this trade. Again, we were talking about small accounts. 
This is how you take a small account and build it. You take quality trades, not just throwing darts at a board. If your mentality in trading is a 50-50 crapshoot, you don't have good odds with yourself with whatever you're doing with trading. And your results probably 100% reflect that. You've got to have more winners than losers. And then you have to have some big winners. Okay. Walmart's actually a big winner for us. Google is a big winner for us. Okay. But, you know, for the, the whole point is obviously that if you want to do this for a living, you have to make money on a regular basis if you want to day trade for a career. And you have to make money even if you want to do it on the side, because otherwise you're wasting your time and you're wasting your assets. You'd be better off putting your money in a savings account like we were talking about and earning 4.7% right now. You want to take your money and turn it over. And to turn it over, again, I'm trying to turn it over one to one. 100% is great. 50% is even good. But where are you going to put your money and invest $1,000 and turn it into $1,000 in a week, a day, two days? At, not at any bank, okay? So trading is about chunking it out where you can take an amount of money, whatever that amount of money is, again, could be $500 and take that $500 and earn another $500 and then you have a thousand. And again, that's how you build up your account. But I'm following the moves that institutional money makes in the market. Then I'm capturing those moves in a small time frame in a small period of time daily. That is what I focus on doing. And again, this is what I teach people as well. But speaking of institutional money, let's talk about shorting. One of the benefits is that I like to short, but it's the concept of shorting, it's the fear, it's the panic that comes in very, very quickly in stocks. And again, that's why you have to know what to watch. Because by the time the sell-off happens and comes in and overtakes you, well then guess what? You may have missed it. So again, you don't want to chase it. So again, for everything that we're doing, we always, always, always want to be in early because when you're in early, you could get out of half in the first drop. You can hold it. You could get out of the whole thing if you want. But I'm, I'm looking for really what are institutional money? What is institutional money doing with the stock? Again, we did the crowd long because that stock got bought. You know, uh, AMD was a good long this morning. We didn't do it because we did the Walmart, but AMD ran up today. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market. Stocks creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock, and you want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. And that's why next week is going to be very important on Wednesday to see what the Fed says, because the market is betting 100% that the Fed will not raise rates next week, will not raise rates at all in 2024, and in fact, we're low rates in 2024. And, he, and Powell has not said that, but the market is believing that. So you could see some great trading next week. Again, could be to the upside, could be to the downside. I won't know till I see the gap. So here, actually, here's the Walmart. This is, I didn't put in today's chart, but this was yesterday's chart. So I called a put in Walmart yesterday, and it went today. It was up into the close yesterday. It's continuing today, and then we did the day trade today in Walmart. But if you become a specialist in defining what institutional money will do with, with a, a, a stock, whether it's go long it, invest in it, move it up, or dump it and sell it or short it, it's very easy for you as an individual trader then to make money. And again, we're trading for big moves, momentum moves, not pennies. And again, if you have a small account, you can trade options and capture those large moves with options without needing a margin account. But if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction and then you get out after the move happens for profit. You just have to understand how to read the side of power and it's so much more than reading charts. You have to have the knowledge. If you don't have the right knowledge, what to look for, you know, won't know what to do. And again, like I said earlier, you don't know what you don't know. And you won't until you know it. And many traders make the mistake, the classic mistake of doing something for a long time and thinking that it works and thinking that they know everything about something, whatever it is, an indicator, whatever, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work because they're not making money. If you're making money, you're successful. And if you're not, you're not. The market has the ability to pay you, and it can, but you got to find the right things to trade. So I'm usually looking for one thing a day, but I'm trying to just hone in to that thing. Again, we could have gone long AMD today too, 
But knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to becoming a successful trader. And you can win big trading on the side of the power. And again, how do I do that? I do that in gaps. Now, I'm waiting for next week for the market at this point, but we did do the SPY put here. We did the 420 SPYs. This was on October 25th. <laughs> again, this is an options newsletter I send that goes directly to your inbox. Cost was 470, sold at 950, profit was 9600. Again, a good trade. Again, flip your money over. If you took three contracts and risked 1410, you could have made 1440. Again, 100% return on investment, in and out, in and out. Again, we did this trade. The move was on the 25th. Let's take a look at it. So again, this was when the market was really selling off beautifully. This was during October. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, boom, boom, boom. And again, this was the end of October. Look at the sell-off. So we did the 420 puts. You can see here, I called it above the strike, fell into it, and dropped. So again, you didn't have to do anything. You take the train, let it go. You got to get out. Got to get out when you're up. That kept going, actually, though. So again, funny to look at this now, where the market has come from October, again, where it was. You know, again, we're, we're not... This isn't swing trading. We're, we're, we're making money. This is active participation. You're actively taking trades. You're getting in and you're getting out and you're making money on a regular basis. Any questions here before I keep going? How's everybody doing? Okay. So again, golden gaps have huge opportunity because they spot power money. And that's what we're looking for. So I don't know what I'm going to trade tomorrow. I can look at the gaps tonight. I can wait for tomorrow morning. I usually wait till the morning to look and see what exactly is going on. I try to figure out you know, what I'm doing each and every morning just because I'm a morning person. Uh, someone's asking about metrics. Um, I had the stats for the year at the beginning of the webinar. I'm using the daily chart to determine the gap. And then I enter the trade in the one minute, whoever was asking about the time frame. Um, something's, something is, uh writing something really really long after breakout do you wait for a pullback for an entry no but again i'm playing the gap whoever asked that so i i know what i want to do before the open before 9 30 even hits so no i'm not waiting for any pullback i don't even talk and i don't even talk like that i don't even say the word pullback it's just not even in my vocabulary it's not even in my class um Something about tight stops. Somebody's saying something about tight stops, and that's fine. But again, you should just size yourself correctly and let trades play out. Um, am I trading micros? No. Let me see if there's any other questions I missed. I think that's it. Any other questions here? I'm just seeing I, I missed the questions um percentage of wins versus losses here i'll go back to the stats at the beginning because someone's asking about this you can go back here although i believe sherry's taping this you can go back um you will have trades that lose but you should have more winners than losers so the losers these are the stats for the year again sherry's taping this and i'll have this on my youtube later the parentheses trades are the losses so yes you will have some trades that lose that's why i put a stop in so when i'm in the room for example like i i call the stop for walmart it, it didn't stop it went but if walmart had stopped i would have taken a loss okay you have to have a stop this the stop is a limit order stop if the stop hits you out i might retake it i might take a second trade in it which i call a retake okay where it sets up again but i don't have unlimited risk if that answers your question 
but you have to have a system where you have more winners than losers and some of the winners have to be big winners. Walmart was a big winner today and Meta was a big winner, like I said on Monday. Now, as far as the options, same thing here. The losers are the trades in parentheses. Um, and again, you have to set your risk. Your risk should be the same or close to the same in every trade. I risk more in my options, why? Uh, when I first started trading options a long time ago, actually, I was trading stocks like Google and Amazon, and things were very, very expensive at the time where one contract cost $50 or more. And so I had started out with my risk at four or five grand, and then I upped my risk because I've been doing this longer. So I'm risking more money in my, in my options, and I also want to hold them longer. But nowadays, the most expensive thing that we're doing is actually NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is the most expensive thing we do. Now, if someone's talking about, uh, you know, if you have losing weeks, we really haven't been having losing weeks for day trades. Now, I might have a losing week for options, though. Why? Because if I do eight trades that go with the market and the market turns against me, then I might lose that week in options. In the same retrospect, if I do eight trades or 10 trades a week in the options newsletter with the market and I'm correct, which I actually was this week, we had a big week this week, which I'll go over in a minute, then you have a huge week doing options. So it depends what you wanna do, but you will have some losing weeks with me on the options newsletter. Not, not that often, but if I take market directional options and the market goes against us, then you will lose if we do multiple trades, huge spies, Apple, whatever. That's, we really aren't losing in, on a weekly basis with the day trades, but I'm doing a heck of a lot less day trades, if that makes sense. I'm only usually doing one day trade a day. Now, I didn't do any options today. Why? There wasn't anything good. I was already in the Walmart, um, so I was in the Walmart already, but I might do five options on one day, and then I only do one day trade. So you see what I mean? We were short the market from last Thursday, 11.20, I think I have a spy in here. Here, let me look at it. Uh, I think I have a spy chart somewhere in here. Well, maybe I don't. Um, I thought I did. Hold on. Yeah, here. Oh well, I don't have. I don't. I don't have uh, the cues. We were short. We were we were short a couple of things last Thursday. Well, here, Google. So this day, I we were we were in a bunch of puts, and they all went on Monday, and we got out. Netflix, Google, Qs, we were in a ton of stuff, and then we got the gap down Monday in the market, and they all went, and then that was it. So we haven't done any market related trades since then the market's been in too tight of a range and i don't think it gets out of that range at all until next week so you know until after wednesday and and by the way hot take hot take is that the the fed does or says something next week that kills this rally in the market that's a hot take and if i'm on tv between now and wednesday I'll say that on TV. I pitched a bunch of places, Fox and CBX this morning. I haven't heard back from anybody. Probably no one wants to hear what I have to say about that. Hot take. The market doesn't, the, the pal does not say what everyone else on TV has been saying for the last month. And the market thinks. So the market doesn't, th the market thinks we're at the height of the, of the rain heights. Pal has not said that. So that's my two cents if you, you were viewers here today on TV. Um, I think I'm through the questions. Let me see. Where were we? Do the spy. Anyway, someone was asking about stats and things in that. This is why it's important to also take the amount of money you have and split it up. So I don't care if you have, you know, 500 grand in an account. You have to say, okay, I'm going to do this many trains per day. I'm going to do this many trades per week. I'm going to do this many trades per month or whatever. And then you size yourself accordingly. Everyone has to work within those parameters. Every trader has to work within those parameters. No one has unlimited money. No one has unlimited funds. Everyone has parameters they have to work within. So again, you should never blow up your account. 
Never, even if you have a losing trade or a losing day or even a losing week, you, sh you have to pace yourself. Does that make sense? So if I call five trades in one day and you can't do them, then you're not doing them. Then you're doing one. But if I call the cues and the spy, it's basically the same move I'm, I'm predicting. Does that make sense? So again, you might have done Google and then not done the cues or something. And then you'd pace yourself and do one at a time. Um, somebody is saying about you won't know your size until after the gap. No, that has nothing to do with it. You have to determine your amount of your risk per trade, and that should have nothing to do with the gap. <coughs> you should be consistently risking the same money or close to it in every trade. So getting back to what I was saying, there is only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock. Money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. Guess what? Again, hot take. The Fed says something next week that creates a sell-up in the market. The market's still going to close up for the year. We had a bullish year. There's no denying it. Even though I did puts in the market and made money this year, it, that has nothing to do with the trend. But at the end of the day, I'm not seeing power money come into this market full throttle. Why? Power money is waiting to hear what the Fed is going to say again in December, which didn't happen yet. So they may or may not know. But if power money was in charge of this market, we'd already be over the high. Why? We rallied in November. We had plenty of time to get over the high. We could be going over the high today, tomorrow. We're not. Why? Power money is waiting. That's why the market has been in a tight range since 11, 20, uh, 11 14. Since November 14th, there was a gap up in the market, and the market's been trading in a range since then, and that ain't going to change until Wednesday. And where it goes on Wednesday, I don't know. I will be waiting. I'm not going to do anything just like a crapshoot. Wait, take quality trades, do selective things like we did the Walmart today. And I'll look for something different tomorrow, whatever it is. So again, you know, be smart with your choices of money. And, and again, if you, if you are rich, great. If you're not, think like you're rich. So you make better decisions. Because the, the stress that most people find when they're trading is they're constantly holding so tightly to their money and so scared of taking any trade, and then also at the same time desperate to have some big trade and some big win that they can't stop themselves, and then they take trades just for taking trade's sake, and then they take crappy trades. And that's just a horrible way to think. Do you know what I mean? It's like, um, here's a good example. I, there's a designer that I really, I love clothes. I'm really into fashion, I've always been. Anyways, there's a designer that I found that I'm in love with, this designer, it's Veronica Beard, you can Google it especially if you're a woman and you're here, gorgeous jackets. Anyways, we're doing a lot of sales right now because it's the end of the year. They're doing sales before the launching spring collection. So they're doing different sales on the fall and winter clothes. So I looked online this morning. It's like 30% off, 20% off, 40% off. And I'm looking at some of the things I'm like, eh. it's like, again, if I'm in love, if like some of the jackets I've gotten, I've amassed a phenomenal collection of this designer in a very short period of time since I found out about it in like late September. Anyways, I've, I have some beautiful jackets that I got of hers. But some of the ones on sale, I'm like, eh, it's just like a jacket. And like, they're like $800 jackets. So I'm like, so some of them are like $400. They're like, oh, $400 is a great price for a Veronica Beard jacket. But it's like, eh, it's nothing really special. And then I'm like, do I really want to pay $400 for this jacket? I get that it's 40% off, but it's not like something really special. Like some of the jackets are just beautiful, beautiful tailor, beautiful buttons. Again, you can go online, look at them. But anyways, they're on sale, but some of them aren't fabulous. Like all the fabulous ones I already got, which I didn't get on sale and I paid full price when they had my size and when they launched in early fall and then in the last you know, two months. <laughs> so again, you, you, everyone wants to like save a buck, save a penny. No, cheap is not the way to go. Pay for what you want if you can get it and it's special and it's good. So I'd rather wait instead of getting an early entry in this market if I want a short, which I don't know because we may not fall, we may go up. Or if I want to go long, I could get in here. But what if we fall? So again, it's, it's, it's timing counts. But I'd rather pay up and get it right. And I'd rather pay more and get a beautiful jacket that's a one of a kind that's not on sale for 40% off 
because all the good ones went and luckily I got the good ones when they first launched some of the beautiful ones but you, you get what I'm saying so it's cheap is not the way to go and if you're someone that's successful or you earn a lot of money you don't you don't have to be that way and if you're not if you don't start thinking that way you're never gonna get there you're never gonna get there does that make sense All right, that was a sidebar. But let's go over here about BABA. $80 puts we did on the 16th. We did the 77s, we did the 75s. Again, we've been doing this, we've been shorting this, it's falling. Cost was $2, sold at $350, profit was $6,000. Return on investment, 75%. Really, 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 really just a beautiful sell off. And I got out of this, I think, a little early even. Where did we do this guy? Here, we did it. We've been doing it for like a month. So again, stock close here, gap down, fell, and we've just been doing this. It's just been falling. It's been a beautiful short. So like I said, chunk it out, chunk it out, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it out. You don't want to hold something forever. You want to give something a chance to work. Be in between. Don't be a pigger, okay? There are certain things that I could say, hold this to a piggy target. Not, not right now. There's nothing that I feel that way about, all right? So I, the system that I use finds the right gap each day to trade. You will learn the 26 point checklist if you come and take my class. It's my information, I designed it, I figured it out, and now I teach it. I'm the best person to do it, and again, I call the trades live in the room. You can go through and rate the checklist. If you'd like a trial for the room, if you're serious about the class and you'd like to actually consider taking the class next weekend, then you can have a trial for the room tomorrow, last day of the week, if you'd like to email me. But you've got to find a daily focus, one pick a day. That's all you need. That's all you need to make money. And then you add on size as you get better. And again, you do it as an option, do it as a put, do it as a day trade. If you want to make money in the market, you need to think and act like a true professional. And you also need to think like someone who has already achieved the American dream, who is already wealthy and successful, not like someone that's scraping at the barrel because that's not going to get you where you want to be. This is true, even if you're trading only part-time. And remember, professional traders have specialized strategies. It's, they're not a 50-50 crapshoot. They're not risking millions of dollars as a crapshoot. They have systems. They have reasons for taking trades. They may be different reasons than yours, but they absolutely have reasons. And it's not because something's sitting on a moving average either or any indicator. Once you learn how to find momentum, making money is not hard. It just isn't. I have hard days, but I, I, I bottom line is, it's not hard for me to make money at this point. I've been doing this for a long, long, long time. Sometimes I do have hard days. Why? Things don't work out the way that I want. And that sucks, but that's part of trading. But I'm very good at getting over and getting through it. And then I usually go push the next day even harder. And again, that's my personality. But that's, that's one of the reasons why it's so beneficial to follow me and be with me in the room. Because when we do have a loss in something, I can even come back and then we have an even bigger day the next day because my personality is so much that I like to win. And then and it's good to be on the side with someone like that. But focus on one strategy to be effective and efficient. So every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, two, big moves on the day, three, early confirmation of my bias and the move between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. And that's what I'm looking for. And really, again, if you come and learn from me, you're gonna learn how to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions. Again, think like a big trader, think like a professional. It, think like an institutional trader. To make entry decisions and exit decisions is to learn from me on the small time frame of the one minute, which has a very high degree of focus and accuracy, particularly if you're a, a day trader, you need to hone it down. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the direction, and then using the one minute chart allows for good risk reward trades with accuracy. So this is again, what you'll learn in the class from me. You're gonna learn the 26 point rating system, which will help you pick which stock to trade each day. It pinpoints ahead of time, which stock will have the move on the day with volatility and momentum to trade. And that's how you're gonna make money. Whether you have 100 shares, 500 shares, or 5,000. Having a checklist keeps you organized and focused and you stick to it. And having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart and a stock to make the correct decision rather than doing things that you've been doing for years that don't work. Having a checklist helps assist you with a directional bias and it's a checkpoint for you. 
You double, triple check yourself. Having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. So you can be where you wanna be by the end of 2024. If you're not where you wanna be now at the end of 2023. A checklist is a plan of action. I like plans of actions. I like lists. I like writing things down. I'm old fashioned about that. It helps. It helps you learn. It helps you check with yourself. Everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action and a checklist. On a professional level, all high income career fields have checklists. You go get an operation, you get there's a checklist. Things you have to do before you go in. The doctor has a checklist. The nurse has a checklist. The anesthesiologist has a checklist. You go fly in a plane, the pilot has a checklist. These are good, solid things to keep you as a human being in check. And that's how you keep your emotions in check too and the discipline, which you need. You need to be successful. Trading is not gambling. And if you think like it is, then you're, you're going to have a hard time making it. But why are gaps so profitable? Again, because of large institutional money. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap in the first place. And the professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. And again, no hesitation on my part when we play it because I already like it in the first place because I already rated it in the pre-market. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. Hurry, hurry, hurry. It's going to sell off. We got to get in. Boom. And then it drops. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. And again, we're looking for the momentum. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to train because you're trading on the side of power and money. So just think about what I'm saying here. I mean, you don't want to waste time trading without getting anywhere. I don't, I don't know why people don't find that frustrating, but I've taught people or come in contact with people or email back and forth people that have been trading longer than I'm alive and they're still losing money and not successful. It just makes no sense if you're spending time doing something and you're not getting it somewhere with it. You want to see results. Results count. Any other questions here? <clears throat> I have a few more minutes if anyone has any questions while I'm finishing up. But you've got to get to the point of realizing that the market can bring you financial freedom. It takes learning how to trade properly. It takes focus. And again, you've got to be focused on what you're doing. You've got to be focused on the money. You've got to have the right information. And you have to have the right knowledge and focus. Information counts. And again, how are you going to do that? You're going to learn from an expert. I'm an expert in shorting. I'm also an expert in reading gaps. I'm an expert in trading on the one minute chart, which is how we can, we did some of these trades I showed you here, the BABA, the meta from Monday. And again, time is too precious to waste. When you think about the fact that it's the end of the year, I'm shocked at that. This year flew by for me. It, it just flew, you know, it was a busy year, but I'm like, wow, you know, like, can we just take a break for a minute? I mean, this just time seems to be going so fast, you know? So if you sign up for my class, what will you learn in the Golden Gap course? The 26 point checklist, it tells you what to trade and what to look for each day. It's the checklist. This is what you'll learn. This is the information that's going to help tell you and define what to do for the pick. You need the right pick. And again, it's all in the chart. It's all technical analysis. You're just going to learn from me what to look for. So empower yourself today. You can come, you can learn my class. It's a complete system to trade. Last class for the year is next weekend, December 16th and 17th. And remember, education is a gift to yourself. You are, it's an investment in your future, an investment in yourself, an investment in trading, if this is really what you want to do. <coughs> Again, trading isn't for everyone, and yet many people trade, and they really do want to do it. They want to do it. They've been attempting to do it for years. So if you say, I really want to do this, then invest the time and energy and money into learning to get it right. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a two full day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Last class for the year is December 16th and 17th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Cost of the class is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. And I'm doing a last class of the year package. Big offer here for the holidays. I love that old Santa, that old fashioned Santa. If you sign up for the Golden Gap Course Combo Tuition, which is $74.99 to get the Golden Gap Course, and the trends course and the special package, this is going on through tomorrow, December 8th. You would have to sign up by tomorrow. You will get the options class free. 
you will get the live trading room free to the end of 2024, the realm free to the end of 2024, the newsletter free to the end of 2024, and the market report subscription to the end of 2024. This is a huge offer. And again, it's going on through tomorrow. I've been running it all week. But again, I've been teaching people how to trade now since I've had the business, which is 10 years. And again, I've been trading for 16. So I know that people can do it. And again, I'm doing it myself. Here's some testimonials and any last minute questions here. Go back. My information. If you'd like a trial for one day for tomorrow, you can email me. How's everyone doing? Be thoughtful about your trades. Be thoughtful about the trades you take and, and think about some of the things I said. Um, any other questions? Wonderful. Happy holiday, Sherry. Thanks so much for having me and everybody else. Any last minute questions? Hello. Do we need to put anything in the chat? You're eight minutes early, my friend. Oh. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm always so worried about going over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we I set an alarm on my I set an alarm on my phone so I don't go over. But um, <laughs> let's see. Can I put a Can I put a link in here for you? They just need to go to the Stock Swoosh. Yeah, it's www.thestockswoosh.com. And again, my email is Melissa at thestockswoosh.com. There you go. So again, it's it's really really be careful for those of you that are trading up until next Wednesday. I'd look for selective things. I'd stay away from the market. If it sucks you in to doing something, you may regret it because again, Wednesday could be something that the market doesn't expect because the market is expecting the Fed to say they're gonna cut rates early 2024 and that may not happen. But for those of you that have been following me and interested, this is a great package. This last class of the year package is a huge package. If you can do it, if you're free this weekend, if not, you can sign up or not, not ne this weekend, next weekend. If you're, if you're not, you can sign up tomorrow, start training with us and do the class in January. That's another idea as well. Cool. All right. Thanks.